Mr. Beat presents Presidential Elections, elections in American, American History. The 56th presidential election in American history took place on November 4th, 2008. This was the first election in which I voted in the primaries, and there were a lot of exciting candidates to vote for. But first, let's see how George W. Bush's second term went. Well, probably not that well. The Iraq war kept getting worse, and Bush became a scapegoat for the government's poor response to helping victims affected by Hurricane Katrina. Not only that, but the economy was in shambles after the housing bubble burst in what later became known as the Great Recession. In 2008, Bush's approval rating had gotten as low as 25%. Therefore, many Republicans began to distance themselves from him. Was Dick Cheney going to run? Ha ha ha, that's a good one, Mr. Beat. This election became the first time since the election of 1952 that neither the current president or current vice president ended up a candidate, and the first time since the election of 1928 that neither even went for it. Then again, Bush can even, if he wanted to, due to the 22nd Amendment. But anyway, the Republican nomination was completely up for grabs. I will mention a few candidates. First of all, there was this guy. We should be debating foreign policy, whether we should have interventionism or non-interventionism. Ron Paul, a congressman and doctor from Texas, stood out among the nominees because of his non-interventionist foreign policy and overall libertarian views. He had actually ran for president with the Libertarian Party back in 1988, but had lost badly. There was also Fred Thompson, an actor and former U.S. Senator from Tennessee. Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, he was mayor, in fact, at the time of the 9-11 attacks, and he liked to bring that up. There was Mike Huckabee, the former governor of Arkansas, and of course he's a bass guitar player too. There was Mitt Romney, the former governor of Massachusetts and son of George Romney, who was a presidential candidate himself back in 1968. And finally, there was John McCain, who was back for a second go at it after not getting the nomination back in 2000. McCain was polling in single digits after he first announced his intention to run, but eventually moved his way up to become the front runner. While the early primaries went back and forth, after Super Tuesday, there was no stopping McCain. He became the Republican nominee, going with a surprise choice as his running mate, Sarah Palin, the governor of Alaska. She was only the second female to be on the ticket for a major political party in American history. The Democratic Party also had quite a few candidates. First of all, there was this dude. Mike Gravel, a former senator from Alaska who appeared to not give a crap what people thought about him. There was Bill Richardson, the governor of New Mexico, who was trying to be the first Hispanic to be president in American history. Then there was Dennis Kucinich, a U.S. representative from Ohio, who was the only one running in 2008 who had the distinction of voting against the Iraq War. There was Joe Biden, the senator from Delaware who also ran way back in 1988. John Edwards, Kerry's running mate in the 2004 election. Hillary Clinton, the wife of former President Bill Clinton, and by this time a senator from New York. And finally, Barack Obama, a senator from Illinois, who was a relative newcomer but made a strong impression giving a speech during the 2004 Democratic Convention. Woo! That's a lot of candidates. Well, there were really two front runners, Clinton and Obama. The two went back and forth in the primaries, and it got pretty intense. After a 17-month-long battle, Obama finally got the superdelegates to his side, and in June, Hillary Clinton dropped out of the race. The Democratic Party nominated Obama, who became the first African-American to win a major political party's nomination for president in American history. He chose Joe Biden as his running mate. Much of the debate between the Republicans and Democrats in the presidential race revolved around the Iraq War and the financial crisis. Because Bush was so unpopular, McCain distanced himself from him, although Bush did endorse him. McCain had some blunders during his campaign, like this. The fundamentals are, of our economy are strong, but these are very, very difficult times and not remembering how many houses he owned, but so did his running mate, Sarah Palin. I was curious, what newspapers and magazines did you regularly read? Um, all of them, any of them that um, have, have 
been in front of me over all these years. Similar to the election of 1996, a subtle change versus experience theme existed. Obama, who used the word change to sum up his entire campaign, pushed for major reforms like universal health care and bringing our troops home from overseas. McCain, who, like Bob Dole in 1996 and Ronald Reagan in 1984, was up there in age at 72 years old, had hoped Americans would want to vote for someone who had been around and knew the system. Plus, Palin was young, like Obama, so, you know. Obama generally had passionate supporters, many of them younger. Palin also tended to have some passionate supporters as well. The candidates in 2008 all took advantage of social media for the first time, and some of them were able to raise millions of dollars completely online. Ron Paul actually raised more money in one day than any other candidate in American history. It didn't help him in the end, though. This was the first election in which YouTube existed, and Obama in particular used this medium well. Oh, and a shout out to Ian, who wanted me to mention the libertarian candidate Bob Barr, a former U.S. representative from Georgia, who sued to prevent McCain and Obama from getting on the ballot in Texas, saying their parties didn't reach the state's deadline. The Texas Supreme Court, though, rejected his lawsuit without giving a reason. Heading into Election Day, Obama seemed to have all the momentum, and most Americans believe the media was on his side. And here are the results. Barack Obama won, becoming the 44th president in American history. He received 365 electoral votes and 52.9% of the popular vote. John McCain received 173 electoral votes and 45.7% of the popular vote. It was the highest voter turnout since 1968. Obama overwhelmingly got the vote from voters under 35 years old, while McCain overwhelmingly got the 60 and over vote. According to exit polls, over 95% of African Americans voted for Obama. That makes sense, as Obama is the first African-American president in American history. I'll see you for the next presidential election, buddy.